moving on from that i wanted to quickly talk about this because this i think is legitimately 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 annoying and i don't really understand why this is happening so i think some of you guys are aware that ufc 280 happened right over what just this past weekend and there was a controversial fight between peter pietra yan and sugar sean o'malley right or sean sugar o'malley and it was a split decision win for Sean O'Malley. Now, some people are suggesting that Sean O'Malley didn't win that fight because of how close it was and because of some of the takedowns that Peter Petra Young had and how flipping, um, what does it say, highlight real worthy they were because I think a couple of them, he picked Sugar Sean up for his, on his shoulder and slammed him down, right? So they looked pretty impressive, but they didn't really, he didn't really do much damage when he was on top, really, to be honest. I think Sugar Sean did defend himself on the back quite well. But regardless... The whole MMA community, UFC community was split about who won the fight. And I guess because a lot of people think the UFC coddle Sugar Sean and give him loads of easy fights, um, essentially because they think he's one of their biggest stars and they want to make sure that he doesn't get knocked out and keep winning and stuff. A lot of people think he gets the advantage, so maybe that's why he ended up winning. So the decision, so the, the the thing, you know, we're split in terms of our opinion about who won the fight, but it was a pretty close fight. You can understand if you thought one or the other person won. I rewatched the fight again the other day, and I have to say the first round, for sure, Pet Petra Jan took it. He definitely came out on the front foot. Second round, I'll say goes to Sugar Sean, but again, there was a couple of good takedowns um, from Peter in that round that kind of, kind of throw up, you know, 50-50 um, type thing. And then the third round was the one where I couldn't really call it to be fair I thought both guys really kind of dug deep um you know bit into their mouth guards and were taking loads of damage and really trying to you know put the other guy out as well so you got to actually see that Sugar Sean has a pretty decent chin and Piet and Peter Young was obviously somebody that you know we knew was going to give Sean O'Malley issues anyway but close fight nothing else needs to be said very very close fight but for some reason for some redacted reason Brendan thinks this closeness of the fight and the backlash that Sean is getting from this only from the fight and maybe his reaction and maybe because in general he's a bit of a troll but he's not hated in the way that Brendan is in the slightest but for some reason Brendan's took it upon himself to become the Sugar Sean O'Malley like uh, protection squad he's gone out there on the limb and basically used it as an excuse to basically remind people that he's the most hated one and all this stuff and that what he's gone through it's a very bizarre thing to do and it's just as this is and look what he's called it too he clipped it from his show it's called brendan Shaw's sugar sean rant and he's basically trying his best to basically become sugar sean's best friend in hating and stuff which is a weird thing to kind of try and curry favor with but let's just see what brendan has to say about it and how he basically tries to make it all about himself in a weird way so he doesn't deserve to be in there with the top three guys in the world because not only did he show out and put on a great fight even if he lost that decision you can't tell me he's not a top five talent even if the judges sided with the majority of what the fan base and the the mma quote-unquote experts think which there's really not a lot of experts in this space experts are such a loose term when it comes to sports so new but people that cover it most of the people that you can hardly talk. <laughs> what? It's the people that cover it. Hold on. Let's go back to that sentence again. What did he say there? Decision. You can't tell me he's not a top five talent. Even if the judges sided with the majority of what the fan base and the, the MMA quote unquote experts think, which there's really not a lot of experts in this space. Experts are such a loose term when it comes to sports so new. But people. That's a cope in it. Of course, there's experts. There's people who sit there and watch tape. They watch previous fights. And that's the thing as well with him. He doesn't even do that thing where, I forgot who that guy is, but there's a few people that do it where they follow different promotions like around Europe and shit. Stuff that's outside of, you know, stuff that's in fucking South America. Like stuff that we don't get to see on social media because it's really underground, really kind of... Um, grassroots type of thing and they follow these guys trajectory all the way until they get to the ufc or they get to another major organization they do that kind of stuff like actual research you know what i mean they go and interview these people at their flipping local gyms or whatnot or get the you know the lowdown on them through other coaches they actually do the work that's needed to kind of be an expert that's all you need to do just have a have a flipping curiosity about it pay attention to it do a lot of research bloody blah, blah 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 over time you become an expert so this idea that you can't become an expert in a sport that's new 
is ridiculous. <laughs> like it's just a cope because he doesn't do it. I mean, he doesn't do that work himself, which is really interesting too, because he was a former professional athlete himself, a former fighter. So what, the fact that he's such, he's so resistant to tell anybody or to accept that somebody is an expert is very, very telling. People that cover it, most of the people that cover it, where it's MMA fighting, MMA junkie, Sheer Dog, you name it, all those things, ESPN guys, all those major you know media outlets all scored it for Peter Yan. Let's say that it did go Peter Yan's way. Even if it did, you still can't sit here and tell me that Sugar Sean is an elite. He proved all you guys wrong, all the haters wrong, that he is an elite, high-level UFC fighter. Matter of fact, now he's the elite. He's top three, easily. As far as striking goes, there's a reason Peter Yan was shooting so much. And it ain't because he wanted to, because he's getting pieced up on the feet by a guy who's ranked number 11. He wasn't really getting pieced up. Peter Yan landed a couple of big bombs, loads of good over right hand, over right, so over, overhand rights. If I remember correctly, I think one where he patted his hand down and kind of came from the top. I'm pretty sure I remember a couple of those. One that actually um, kind of sat Sugar Sean down a little bit, but he kind of stayed up a little bit too. Like he landed some bombs. This idea he didn't have like that. And some really good calf kicks and leg kicks as well, just in general. This is a really bizarre assessment. But anyway, let's continue. You rank number one. Peter Yan's known for his striking, right? He's not. His go-to isn't wrestling. His go-to usually is on the feet, his footwork, wearing the guy out, throwing combinations, knocking guys out. Didn't happen with Sugar Sean, did it? Sugar Sean's elite. So if you guys want something to hate on, man, you, you can take a uh, big chunk out of it now. He's just getting started. So if you woke up this morning on the wrong side of the bed and you're upset that this guy with pink hair, the rainbow hair, and the tattoos, and he's hanging out with Takashi 69 if you hate him before, he's just getting started. Why is he so like gleeful and so happy that Sugar Sean's getting all this hate off the back of this fight? Like, why does it bring him so much happiness? Is it because he thinks that he's have he's had a brother in arms now because you know he might be one of the other more hated guys coming up and stuff? I don't get it. Like, if anything, people hate Sugar Sean for like a legitimate reason because they feel like he gets gimme fights and maybe this was his first real test. Maybe the fight with Chito. Chito uh, Chito Vera, sorry, was that was another test that some people think he failed. I don't necessarily think so. I think you know the injury obviously really compromised him, and I think if he goes into a fight again with you know Chito Vera, I think it would end differently for sure. Um, I think it'd be a lot closer than people actually give him credit for. But maybe Chito's a really you know in terms of he's probably bigger than him in terms of frame. I don't know, but. Those are those are maybe the only two tests he's had. The rest of them have been pretty easy. He's been given an easy sort of um, run up, especially if you compare his fights to something like I don't know what Darren Till has basically got. Right, they're completely different. So the hate that he gets, Sugar Sean, is pretty warranted in that fact because people think that he's getting preferential treatment, and maybe because you know Sugar Sean doesn't acknowledge his preferential treatment and kind of trolls back. But it's it's not even crazy hate. It's just like you know. They get it because he's at the golden child and Dana's kind of boy, whatever. It is what it is. But he's trying to equate the hate that Sugar Sean gets for fighting for what people give him for thinking that his whole career has been gifted to him by flipping Joe Rogan. They think he's horrible at what he does. I don't understand it. Like, it, there's, no there's no correlation between them in the slightest at all. Zero. You have a lot of animosity towards that man now because if you thought he was big before... He just beat the number one bant bantamweight in the world. No matter how you feel about it, he beat him. But let's talk about numbers. Let's just talk about the fight. In our sport, there's always these terms that get popular and become this regurgitating theme because people don't think for themselves. So it's, oh, he's chinny, right? That for a long time, he's chinny. He's chinny. Chinny was a thing. Chin, chin, chin was a thing. I'm not saying my producer, chin. I'm talking about if a guy lost... Whether he had, you know, 10 knockouts and was on a 10-fight win streak, he gets clipped. Oh, he's chinny. It's this whole chin thing. That kind of went away. People got more educated. It's very rare they use it. Maybe it's a veteran and, you know, and he is getting knocked out. Like a, uh, an example of a, a person where we say their chin's gone would be Bigfoot Silva, right? That guy, I will accept if you say he's chinny. That works in that case. 
for the rest of the guys, it doesn't really work. And the, the audience moved on from it, got more educated, so we stopped using that. Well, now the new term is he got robbed. It's a robbery. Whether it's a decision, whatever, a split decision. Majority. Who is he arguing with also? Who is saying this? I've seen a lot of people on social media say it's split. Even people here in the chat are saying the same things. You guys, some people are saying, you know, Pre 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 Yan won. People are saying that flipping Sugar Sean won. But no one here is sitting here saying, you know, one or the other got robbed. No one's saying that. People are just saying it's a, it's a tight fight and maybe giving a split decision to Sean is a little bit of favoritism. But it's not a robbery. It's just a close fight because I don't think anyone can really call the third round unless you... It's, it's how you basically score takedowns. I don't know. Because like I said, I think the, the takedowns that Peter Yan did were really highlight real worthy because he was getting up on his shoulder and slamming him down and shit. But when I watched the fight back, after he slammed him on the floor, there wasn't much damage inflicted on Sugar Sean. Like he was really defending himself pretty well off the back. Let's be fair. You know what I mean? His jiu-jitsu and grappling isn't that great, but his defense was amazing once he was on the back. He was kind of avoiding a lot of big, heavy shots. He wasn't getting really blitzed and stuff. Like you saw what Al Jermaine Sterling did to what's his face the other day. Those that's what you do when you've actually got someone on the ground. You actually want to inflict damage on them. Do you know what I mean? So I don't I don't understand why he's and so I don't get who he's arguing with. I don't get this freaking idea that everyone said it's a robbery because no one did. And the fight was close. That's what people are talking about. It's a close fight, but no one's saying it's a robbery. Jordy decision. Oh, he got robbed. I don't think you guys know what the term robbery means if you're going around throwing that term out there, especially in the case of Sugar Sean O'Malley. Oh, so are you an expert now? You just said experts don't exist. Are you an expert? Peter Yan. Nobody got robbed. Nothing is a robbery here. It was a split decision. A robbery would be a guy who clearly wins three or five rounds, clearly dominates, and then the judges give it the complete other way. The complete other way, 30-27, 50, you know, whatever, 50, 45, that's a robbery. It's like, Jesus Christ. Robbery, for example, for you guys that like to use the term, would be in the sport of boxing, it'd be uh, Canelo versus Triple G, the first one. That's a robbery. Triple G definitely won that, but they had the fix was in for Canelo. All good, he did it. And then you end up, you know, the second fight, you could also call it robbery. The third one, you can't. Canelo validated himself and beat him there, even though he was a lot older. Either way, that first one would be a robbery. A robbery would be uh, Robbie Lawler Condit for the belt. A robbery would be Machida Shogun Rua. The, the, those are robberies where it's clear as day the other guy dominated. A robbery would be for you guys to use it so you sound educated when you use the term robbery because I mean, so isn't so much. Why is he being so condescending and taking it so personal? I do not understand what is happening here. Because if I'm not, if I'm, if I'm not being mistaken here, Sugar Sean has thrown a couple of pot shots at Brendan in terms of trolling him and saying some things on his own podcast. So I don't get why he's kind of trying to go out there really hard and be the Sugar Sean O'Malley attack squad thing. Is he trying to make Sugar Sean his new? logan or flipping jake paul or something is that what he's trying to do he's trying to ingratiate himself and become his friend and hope that sugar sean clips this and puts it on his social media it's weird how much it's lost its meaning because now every robbery robbery oh that's a robbery no it's not you know what the fuck you're talking about a robbery would be johnny hendrix gsp that's a robbery this isn't a robbery johnny hendrix no matter who you talk to, you look at that, he won multiple, multiple rounds, the majority of the rounds. You might give GSP one there. I could see maybe two. Sure as hell, no facet three. But these judges did. That would be a robbery. This is not a robbery. If you go back and watch the fight, which I have four times now before I came in here and made this point, if you go through the rounds, Ooh. one, two, and three, it would be tough if you take it without a biased viewpoint with however you feel about Sugar Sean, if you know a thing or two about the way they score fights, they have a criteria, so it takes out the bias of the fight. So if you went into the fight a huge Peter Yan fan, it doesn't matter. You have to score it on these certain topics. You have to. These certain things, cage control, uh, damage being number one. Just so let's make it clear before I make this point. For the judges, the number one determining factor of a round is damage okay i'm bored now but anyway that's the point that he made and the funny thing is joe rogan completely 
disagreed with him. I think Khabib also, there's a video of Khabib in the gym where he's basically like, uh, no, I think in the back, sorry, uh, before Fingamajiggy's fight. And he's like, how? How the hell did Sugar Sean win that fight? It's impossible. And Joe Rogan believes Sugar Sean, um, Peter Young beat Sugar Sean in that fight also. So it says as follows, Joe Rogan thinks Sugar Sean O'Malley fight, um, a group fight against Peter Young, but that it shouldn't have been enough for him to claim victory. O'Malley won a controversial split decision over Yarn after a grueling free round contest at the Etihad Arena in Abu Dhabi last weekend. Both men got dropped and almost finished, but somehow made it to the final bell, with both earning a fight of the night honours and Sugar inserting himself into the title contention, much to the dismay of his critics. Despite O'Malley outlanding Yarn in significant strikes, 84 to 58, many fans feel the latter should have been awarded in victory due to the advantage of the ground and the takedown. No Mercy landed 6 out of 13 takedowns and accumulated 5 minutes of ground control and there was also a really sweet, I remember, I forgot what round it was, maybe it was round 2 uh, Peter Yan did that really cool judo takedown thing that a lot of those guys, Dagestani, Russian you guys do, where it's the one that you kind of step in and you kind of sweep down it looks, uh, it looks so good it looks so so good um, and he, you know, he kind of tripped thing straight away. I forgot what the movie is called, but it's sort of like a thing where you, you step in and you trip the person. It's, it was beautiful. Rogan shares the sentiment that Jan should have won, but believes the problem lies with how the takedowns are scored and that and what value they ought to have. He says, and I quote, a lot of people were shocked at that decision, Rogan said in his recent episode on his podcast. There's a video of Khabib and Magomedov watching the decision and Khabib says, how, how did he win? How? He was certainly in the fight against Peter Jan. He was a former champion, one of the best in the division, by far the number one contender. It was a very close fight and he definitely hurt Peter Jan on multiple occasions, caught him with a big knee and rocked him um the question is how do you much how much is a takedown worth how much is control worth he added takedowns without damage what is that valued i'm not denying that peter yan won because i think that he won at the end of it one of the problems is that i feel very limited by his 10-9 scoring system i don't think it's a good system for mma so even 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 the experts that you would think as an expert right in joe rogan is saying that Peter Young won. So it, clearly there's a split in the camp. So the fact that Brendan is going so hard at kind of being the defense squad for O'Malley and making it seem like the trolls, they don't know what they're talking about. Bloody, it's just a strange position to take because there's clearly some um, confusion as to how, you know, Sean won that on the split decision because of what happened in the fight and because of what people scored the fight to be. So it's just, is what it is. It's just who you maybe prefer in terms of, you know, deciding who basically won that. But it makes complete sense why some people would, would be kind of siding for Sugar Sean in this. But like I said, the, the, the him latching onto this and trying to be his defense squad is really, really bizarre, mate. I'm not really too sure. And there's a clip of it as well where it kind of ingratiates it. I'm going to put it up on you on the screen for you to see. This is from the recent episode where he basically tries to summarize um, his thoughts on Sugar Sean and why he's basically, you know, going out of his way to defend him and basically try and stand next to him in the hate. It's really, really bizarre. You know, Sugar, because he's Sugar and he does troll people and do stuff like that, when you do that, trust me, I get it, you're getting a lot of hate. You have yeah. a lot of fans, you have a lot of hate. Yeah. Welcome to the club, Sugar, right? But you don't troll anyone. It's not welcome to the club. Sugar definitely does troll people and does all that stuff in order to kind of promote his own brand. I think he said that previously, right? Because the UFC doesn't really pay that well. And the UFC only prioritizes fighters who fans want to see or fans are attracted to or like. So he made himself into a bit of a character. Maybe he plays up to it. Maybe that is actually him. But that's what he's clearly doing. It's an entertainment sport in, in a way. So it makes sense why he's kind of going out in this way. But the Brendan thing isn't about him being a troll. It's about people thinking he's undeserving of his success. And they also don't like his, him as a person. That's basically what they hate. It's just not similar in the slightest to what he's talking about with Sean. So you get a lot of that yeah. shit. And so when you when they don't have that narrative to run on, Going, he's only fought, you know, powder puffs. He's been, he's overhyped. The UFC's just doing it because he's big on social media. Once now, th that narrative's not there anymore. Mm -mm. So his haters are going to have to get creative and come up with something else. Ain't what else there. you got? He's haters. It ain't there. What else you they got? Because he's haters. People that doubt, it's not haters, people that doubt that he's that good. Now he's proved it because obviously he was very competitive against a former champion and somebody who people think is a number one title contender. Why wouldn't it be? Um, 
but people are okay to doubt somebody that keeps getting gimme fights they think especially if you look at his record and whatnot his only two actual legit fights against actual legit people were you know Petro Jan you'd say and obviously Chito, Chito Vero sorry so it's fair to be a bit skeptical about his potential but he clearly proved it the guy's got a head of a chin he took out a lot of blows he's very durable He's got decent takedown defense. He's good off his back. He's pretty sneaky too because there's a lot of like glove holding and cage holding and shit. He's quite, you know, he's got that kind of wily veteran thing about him where he can do the dark arts to prevent himself getting any damage and to make sure he wins a fight, you know, clearly. And, and it worked. But the skepticism is allowed because clearly the UFC have identified him as like the next star that they want to you know push and because he's kind of ready-made right he's got his own brand outside of the UFC that's pretty successful that does well for him so for the UFC it, it's, it's advantageous for him to push him because he's kind of plug and play but Brendan thinking this opportunity to maybe insert himself into it and you know become the de facto Sugar Sean protector in the same way he did to flipping Conor McGregor and making excuses and you know the whole Conor McGregor thing if he stands like this he's going to be able to beat fucking Mayweather is really strange really really strange and kind of lame to be fair but you know sh we shouldn't really expect anything different from the guy in it he's trying to ingratiate himself into it but I've got a feeling this is kind of an attempt to make O'Malley to be the next Jake or Logan Paul because clearly he needs another young protege who's got a lot of clout, um, who's kind of famous on there, who's got, you know, a personality who people like to see. He wants to be associated with him in that regard so that he can be good, good friends with him and then obviously bring him in for content, have him on the show, um, use his name here and there to get some views and be kind of linked to his success in a way. It's a very slimy and horrible thing to see, but, you know, I get where the hustle's coming from a minute. I get where.